In this video, I'll discuss the different types of walls and ceilings that you can do in a van. Shiplap, wood slats, and panel walls. I'll talk about the difficulty, how you attach them, as well as how long it takes to do each type of wall and the cost associated with those. And at the end of this video, I'll bring on Lisa, who works with all of our clients on design, and we'll talk about the design elements for each type of material. So if you're doing a van conversion yourself or you're choosing a design with a professional builder, this video is definitely for you. So let's get into it. So we've got a couple of vans that we're working on right now that we're about 80% complete on, and we'll be wrapping these up in the next two or three weeks. And uh, the wall panels are something that we actually do towards the very end, really in the last maybe 70 to 80% of the project. Now this van has shiplap walls, and the other van has panel walls. So let's talk about, first of all, the shiplap. Now I'm gonna kind of lump shiplap or wood slats or tongue and groove, anything like that, all together. They all kind of install the same way and they're very similar in the application. So with any type of walls of that type, we're using wood slats, long pieces of wood, you're gonna need to first do furring strips on the walls. So let me swing over to this side where we haven't yet started to install the shiplap. So you can see we furred this out and there are really three sections of the van. The lower part up to about maybe 30, 34 inches is um, angles just inward just a little bit. And then you get this section right here and it does another angle. So it comes up then it angles in a little more, and then at the top angles in a little bit more. And this is true for a Sprinter. Promasters and Ford Transits are a little more straight. Um, but what we do is we break the furring up into three sections, that lower section, and then this middle section, and then the upper. So there's a seam in the metal right here, and we run our furring strip, the one that's going across this way, right up against that seam, and then we hang it down exactly where we want our trim to be, um, whether in this van we have capsules from van speed, and so the, the capsule is gonna come right to here, or if we had windows, then we would um, bring this, make this strip exactly come down to where we want that to be. And then the same thing here, we do furring strips on the, on the front and back, and so this really frames out where we're gonna have our opening for the capsules. We run our, the main, you know, our main furring strips vertically because our boards are gonna be going across this way so we have points to attach them all the way across. So like I've discussed in other videos, we do put in all of our cabinets, our galley, our mechanical boxes, and then we fur just down to them and around them. So you can see right down here, we have our electrical mechanical box and we bring, in the back, we'll bring our, our furring strips right down to just above that. And then here we bring it just down below it and just down to the top of the bench. So we'll fur everything just right around that. So we don't bring the furring strips all the way down and then attach our boxes to those. We attach our boxes directly to the walls and we have video on how we do that. You can check that out on our channel. So we've, once we've got everything furred out, then we're ready to start installing the shiplap. So let's talk about that. We start at the top and we work our way down. And with shiplap, we have the tongue hanging down. And what we do is we prep all of the shiplap before we install it. We used to um, just primer it and then we'd put it up and then we putty, sand, paint, but it just creates a big mess and it's really hard to do in a van. Um, and so what we've started to do in our last four or five vans is we prime, sand, putty, paint, everything, all the boards before we put them in. And then as we put them up, we just put pin nails. We use marine adhesive, uh, Loctite marine adhesive, a few dollops across, and then we pin nail just into the tongue. And then the next piece will actually go on top of that and cover those pin nail holes, and then we'll pin nail the next one in, and we just work our way down. Um, and then bring it right down to the bottom of that furring strip so that we're gonna frame out our um, capsule opening uh, using that shiplap. You can see we'll come around here and then we'll have some trim. Once this is all installed, it'll go around it. So once it's installed, it's all finished. We don't have to putty, sand, or repaint ever anything. So it makes it really quick and easy to install. Hey guys. 
Do you enjoy the outdoors, but planning meals has got you down? Whether it's space, weight, refrigeration, or prep, healthy, quick, and easy delicious meals can be a real challenge. More and more people are turning to Thrive Life freeze-dried meals because they're lightweight, need no refrigeration, have no preservatives, and taste amazing. Just add hot water and you've got a meal in less than 10 minutes. With breakfast, lunch, and dinner options, Thrive has got you covered. Check out the link in description for more info. So I want to talk about this back section because this is a tricky, tricky section of a van. Whether you're doing um, shiplap, any type of wall boards, or um, even if you're doing panels, is to get this angle because this angle changes all the way down. So there's a couple of ways that you can cut these pieces to conform to the angle. Like I said, we start with this top piece, and what we'll do is we'll butt it right up when, while it's square, and then we'll just take a little ruler, we'll put it right against there, and we'll put a line on it to scribe that exact angle, and then we'll go over to our miter saw, we'll mi match the blade up with that line and we'll trim it off and then we'll butt it in. Gives you a nice tight fit. And what you find is that as you go down, every one of these boards is a slightly different angle. Most of them, they change by about a half a degree all the way down. But you can get it perfect every time if all you do is just take a short ruler and just scribe that, trim it off on that. And you can see this just is a really nice uh, clean line. And when you make it a really clean, nice line, you don't need to put any trim on this to cover up any kind of imperfections. Kind of look at trim as something that you use when the cuts aren't great and things aren't really tight, then you gotta use trim to cover up your mistakes. But if you can make it really clean and tight, then you don't need to use any trim, which saves a lot of time. So I would say that the biggest negative to doing shiplap or another type of wall board that you're gonna have glued and nailed in place is you're not gonna be able to remove those if you need to get access behind here. So that is one negative. What we try and do is we run all of the wires in places that we can access. So for example, right back here, we're gonna slide our, our capsule ring into this and screw it in and that's removable. So we'll run all our wires right through here so that we can get access to those if we need them. We try not to run wires in places where we're not gonna be able to get access. So you wanna, if you're doing some type of wall board, you do wanna make sure that you plan ahead and run all your wires in places that you're gonna be able to have access later on. And also make sure that there's nowhere that a nail or a screw is gonna hit a wire. We've had people come to us with vans who are having electrical troubles and they have fixed walls or ceilings that there's no way to access to it's really difficult to trace the problems that they're having um, because we can't get access to those things. Also, if you wanna run um, new wires for something, maybe you're adding a fan or air conditioner or a Wii Boost or something like that, if you don't have access, then it can be difficult to run the wires for those new devices. So let's move over to the other van and talk about panel walls. So I'm in another van now that has panel walls. And um, before we get into that, I just mentioned the ceilings. So ceilings are the same way. You can do panels, you can do wood slats, you can do shiplap. Uh, we've done a couple of vans with shiplap ceilings, but we have moved away from that. Because with shiplap, um, to make it look really clean and nice, you're gonna wanna use a marine adhesive and also pin nails. And so there's really not an easy way to remove those if you need to get access. And we have found for the ceiling, it is just super important to have access to the ceiling. So we do not do any type of ceiling that is permanent. Um, we are kind of our signature are these ash ceilings and uh, with the slats and with the black background. And we've done a complete video on that. If you'd like to check that out, I'll link to it in the description. Nice thing about doing slats is that it kind of conforms to the curvature of the ceiling. Same way with panels. If you're doing panels on the ceiling, it's gonna conform as well. Same thing with the walls. The panels really will just, we use quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, and that will bend just enough to conform. With slatted boards, whether it's shiplap or pine, tongue and groove or um, ash, we've done a van with this ash ceiling continue it down the walls. Um, it's nice with these because the slats will also conform to any curvature in the walls. So with the panel walls, you do not really need to do furring strips. I mean, that's optional, but it's not necessary because you're gonna be attaching these directly to the sheet metal of the van. When we do furring strips, we use a 5 8 Baltic birch plywood. And the reason for that is 5 8 
we're able to put a one inch nail in through the shiplap and the furring strips and not hit the metal behind. It won't go all the way through. If you use half inch uh, plywood, it just doesn't, it's just not quite as thick and you have a tendency to put nails or screws all the way through um, and hit the metal behind it. So we just find five eighths. It's not that much more expensive and it just gives you a little bit of extra material. Also, when you're attaching nails or screws, having a little bit more material, you can use a little bit longer screw or nail and it bites just a little bit better. Even though it's a lot more expensive, um, maybe three times as expensive for Baltic birch versus regular um, plywood from the big box stores. Um, we just find it's worth it. But with panel walls, you're not gonna need to do any of that. So it saves quite a bit of time and expense. You know, we probably spend $100 on the materials and you know, half a day doing all the furring strips. Eliminating those does save some time and money when you're doing these panel walls. What we do is we break it up into sections, kind of the back section where there's a seam in the van here and the front section, and we'll make those panels. So just like the shiplap or wall boards, we only bring these panels down to the top of our galley in this case, or the benches or mechanical boxes or whatever they might be. And our countertop will cover this and we'll have a backsplash so you won't see any of this. Um, but rather than have it go all the way down, we leave that open so that the van can breathe. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your plywood, and again, we use Baltic Birch quarter inch. You're gonna to have to template things out. So you're probably gonna start with some cardboard and template all the curvatures of the van and where you're gonna want things. Then you're gonna cut the um, panels, and then you're, you're gonna test fit them, and you may have to do some additional trimming or sanding. You get those fit right, then you're gonna wrap them in foam. We use eighth inch foam, and then we use the fabric. And uh, this is Marathon fabric, and uh, there's a couple of different places you can get it. Uh, probably one of, the, one of our go-to places is Panther RV. And one nice thing is they sell this in a lot of different colors, but in a couple of the colors that are really popular, they actually sell it with the foam backing already on, which saves a step and makes it a lot easier to install. It does cost a little bit more, but we feel like the savings that you get from um, not having to put the foam down, glue the foam, then put glue on that, then glue the material, just making it a one-step process saves a lot of time. So we feel like the it's about three and a half times as expensive for the stuff with the foam. But when you factor in the cost of the foam and all the labor, we feel like it's well worth it. So let's first talk about the time it takes to install the two types. So I, I will tell you, this is one of the first vans that we've done with all panel walls. And I was actually really surprised how much longer it took us. Now, part of that is because we haven't done a lot of these, but part of it is just the process. Um, so with the panel walls, like I said, you're going to have to template everything out, which is going to take quite a bit of time to make sure everything's right. You probably spend to do a whole van a half a day to a day doing that. Then you're going to wrap it all with foam, wrap it with material. That's going to probably take at least another day. Then you're going to install the pieces. Um, I will tell you, just because of all the little nuances of things in this van, um, that we have a flares here, we have a ring around here, all the different parts. Um, it took us about a week to do this interior of this van. Now doing the shiplap walls, which is how most of our vans are done, um, it takes about two hours to prep and paint all of the pieces. Then the installation is about another four hours. And so uh, we can do an entire van, the painting and the installation in about a day for all of the walls. So for us, at least about one day to do the shiplap and four or five days to do the panel walls. So the panel walls are definitely a lot more labor intensive. And I feel like they're a little bit trickier to make look really good. Now, what about the cost? So the cost is actually pretty surprising. So for the shiplap, for example, which we do a lot of, we buy two boxes of shiplap that have eight pieces each. So 16 eight foot pieces. Now we get those from Home Depot. I'll link in the description to the exact ones we use. You have to order them. It's not something they stock. The ones they stock in their store are typically MDF. Uh, we don't use any MDF in the van. We use pine. And so those pine, the pine shiplap, uh, you have to order. Um, we spend less than $200 for the shiplap for an entire van. Then the paint, you're looking at 
not a lot of paint, you know, maybe even if you have to buy a gallon of paint, you're talking 40 to $60 for a gallon of paint. And then the marine adhesive. Uh, you do have all the, um, all the furring strips that you got to do beforehand. So when you combine all that, 200 for the ship lap, another 100 for the furring strips, and then paint supplies and everything, another 100, you're talking about maybe $400 to do your walls out of um, ship lap. For the panels, it's actually quite a bit more money uh, because you've got to buy all the plywood. So we had to buy um, a couple of sheets of Baltic birch quarter inch, which I think was about 60 or $70 per sheet. Uh, let's call that $150 for those. Then you've got the foam and the material. And for this van, we spent about $300 on the foam and the material. And then the adhesive and uh, screws and all that kind of stuff, another $100 or so. So you're looking at about $550. So maybe $100, 100 to $150 more to do panel walls versus doing shiplap or some type of wood wall boards. So now I'm gonna bring Lisa on, and she's gonna, she works with all of our clients on designing their vans and choosing the fabrics and the colors and the materials. Okay, so we're back in the van with the panel walls. And as you can see from the top, like this beautiful ash goes across here. She'll have white cabinets. She'll have a beautiful white cab, um, countertop here. And then she has bamboo down here for her wood. Now, when I do design meetings, I go over the look and feel that you're after. And the look and feel that she was after, this customer was a Zen fill. So my, my bedroom, for instance, is a Zen fill. It doesn't have a lot of color. It's very kind of monochromatic with maybe just a little pop of color. And I think that the, 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 these nice, um, not, you know, shiplap is not everybody's, thing you know shiplap is a farmhouse look a lot of people love it but i love this this fabric because again it brings in the warmth kind of a real hominess and so i love these panel walls that they've installed and i love how everything in here i know it doesn't look like it but this van will be done in a few weeks and i think it's going to take on this very zen very calming natural um, environment that she's looking for. So I hope, hopefully we achieve that goal. So currently we are doing a van for a, a lady who is a traveling nurse and she ha she travels with a dog. So she went with the shiplap panels for her walls because she was worried the dogs would jump up on the bed and scratch at the fabric. And once this is scratched and pulled out, you have to replace the entire panel. You can't just touch it up with some paint. So she opted for the shiplap walls. We've done a lot of shiplap walls. You can even opt for doing wood walls and have the slatted ceiling come down. We've done that in one of our vans and the slatted wood comes down and are your walls. And that's a beautiful look as well. So here we are in a different van. This has shiplap walls. This is a warm, this isn't white, but this is a warmer color. So I think it invites that warmth of a home into your van. And we just love it um, just for the look and feel of it. It's obviously a farmhouse thing. It's not everybody's style, but a lot of people choose to do the, the shiplap in their vans. So here's a question for you. Do you like the shiplap? Do you like the fabric panel walls or do you like the slatted walls coming off of your ceiling? Let us know down below. So after the walls and the ceilings, one of the next big challenges for DIY van builders is the cabinetry. Now we've done several videos on the channel about how we do cabinetry on 80-20 construction versus wood construction. So if you'd like to check out that video, you can tap or click the screen. We've also got tons of other videos on the channel about van conversion, van products, van life. So please consider subscribing and be sure to smash that like button. And we'll see you in the next video. Jeff with Thrive Vans, Thrive On. See ya.